Hey, this is a podcast. No, wait, it's a comedy podcast. Well, we tried to make it a comedy podcast. And uh, it's not meant to offend anyone. So don't get offended, okay? And wait, there's something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listener discretion is advised. Audiomatic presents Our Last Week. Hi, Kunal. Hi, Paul. I hope you are well. I hope everything is fine. All is good. All is well. It's all fine. I uh, am still in London. I'm going to be back in a week. Uh, actually, I did a show here, Kunal, on the 11th of November. And mm-hmm. a couple of people attended who were fans mm. of our last week. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And I wish you could have seen them because then, uh, you know, you are convinced that A, nobody listens and B... You know, anybody that listens cannot be anyone we don't know personally. Yeah, and I'm here to tell you, to I friends found... Friends and family. Friends, immediate friends and family. And I found two individuals who listen to this podcast quite regularly. Um, who we don't know. Who we don't know, who live in a foreign country. And, and they live in this country and they listen to this podcast. And I asked them for a conundrum. And uh, our producers tell us that people in the thousands listen to this podcast. Did you know wow. that? Wow. I mean, we've both spent our entire careers in entertainment. I don't think we've ever, you know, reached yeah. out to more than nine people. Well, either that or our producers are very good liars. So they're liars. Just to they're keep liars. our spirits, spirits up. <laughs> yeah, that's just been, since 2016, they've been lying to us. So yeah. a large group of people do this. But apparently people that listen to this podcast do it while doing other things, like driving yeah. or cooking or... so. That's pretty much how anybody else listens to us as well. You know, our own family members, our partners. Yeah. I mean, life is like the podcast because we are talking, we think we're saying insightful things, but they're busy cooking, cleaning, you know, leading their life. And we are just like a occasional audio influence in their life. Yeah, yeah. So now that's, that... I mean, that, yeah. that's a lot to ask for in any case. You know, I mean, I mean I'm... Like, I'm grateful that we can just be, like, some sort of background music in people's ears. Exactly, exactly. So, how, how our family treats us is now extended to a larger listening base who are yeah. ignoring and not ignoring us at the same time. Right. Yeah, while vacuuming. Uh, so, we were talking about how Western music has changed in India. Because... Mm-hmm. The conundrum was that, you know, now Western music concerts in India are quite, like, well-organized and people come for the music. Uh, Mm. Recently, I saw on Instagram, there was a rapper, an American rapper visiting India called Russ. I don't know if you've heard of Russ. I mean, I didn't, I I hadn't heard of this person. And, you know, he came out and uh, I think it was a Reliance Geo Garden in Mumbai and there were... 10,000 people, they knew all the lyrics and he came out and they started jumping with him and singing. And even earlier, you know, I've seen, you know, I've been to NH7 Weekender in Pune. People are sort of very well behaved. There are fruit stalls. You can buy fruits. You can buy junk jewelry, you know, handcrafted jewelry. You can get tea. You can get, uh, you know, a Kathi roll. It's all, it's like a fair where there's music playing and young people are just sort of like you know, dancing like they're lost in a jungle, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, wearing, you know, weird beads and stuff. So yeah. it, it's sort of like, uh, I, I don't know how to just, a fairy tale meets a concert type venue, you know. Well, and I, I think wha- more, more than any of that, it's it's all very amicable. It's all very, very amicable. Very amicable. It's all very, like everyone's happy and it's all good. It's all lovely. But you you were describing to me, a less peaceful time when we were growing up. And uh, will you tell our listeners why you think that uh, Western music was essentially concerts were placed for violence? Well, you know, I, I just think that, that when, we were, when we were growing up and we went for any one of these rock concerts, like there, there was either a band that was coming in from abroad, like 
you know uh, deaf leopard is coming or mm. deep purple mm. is coming and and then then there were i mean there were so many brian adams i mean he's here practically mm. every every 6 months It but I, it, yeah. i but I, i i do remember that um that before the concert there was always an opening act you know and and many many times we even went for independence rock or one of the local rock mm. concerts where you'd have uh you know you'd have a you'd have the the star of the evening and then you'd have two three other bands that were playing on either side of the of the mm. the main attraction so to speak but there would be like you know either a band is starting out or it's a less established band or whatever it is and there generally be a lot of abuse and aggression both ways yes. you know from <laughs> yeah. from the yeah. audience as well as i mean at some points it would start getting a little aggressive even from like the lead singer or the band members but generally it would be like hey get off stage hey fuck you yeah fuck you vishal and all that stuff that would be generally <laughs> get off the fucking stage and all that so that would be the general attitude towards you know and, and it was also a scene of like everyone's just a little bit angry everyone's out to prove something everyone's out to like you know be everyone wants to be rebellious in that thing you know i just think that right now the music is all just everyone wants to come and have a good time and enjoy the music and that's fine that's good i mean that's healthy but it's not what rock music music used to be rock music used to be about like shouting at the band the band shouting back at you and telling you also to fuck off like i remember <laughs> I remember one guy um one guy got into a very personal fight with one person in the audience. <laughs> it was it was it was like a back and forth between them, you know, because I think that guy kept needling him from one of the front rows and um and so so it was because and then you know then people would like get off the stage and start kind of sometimes it would get physical and it would be and then shows would be cancelled and you say sorry sorry we are, we are if this is the behavior we can't continue like this and all that stuff so it, this was, people would have to come and say please calm down let them finish let them finish and also that would that's what would happen generally at a rock concert you know and that was the atmosphere was a lot more charged so to speak also there was a point where the musician comes out and thinks he's above this that he's not yeah. going to get into a fight with the audience yeah. but yeah. the abuse would get to a point you know like yeah like and i've seen this with say vishal shekhar or whatever you know vishal uh, dadlani where yeah. he'd be like you know this is a song from pentagram it's called mother and he's he mm. wants to he wants to really get into it you know mother this yeah. <laughs> and then the whole audience is like vishal you're a you know you're a bastard vishal you bastard at at one point he would crack you know like yeah, yeah. he's deep in the song he's like mother something and at some point he breaks he's like you're a bastard you know like he couldn't he take just... it anymore rock music was a place where you showed your macho power so outside rock concerts there'd be lots of guy like a group of men would show up in motorbikes wearing yeah. a leather jacket you know with their girlfriend sitting behind like it was a a, yeah. a thing where you know like like the kind of audience you see in wrestling now is the kind of audience you'll see in rock music <laughs> right right i've got i've come for a fight but there'll be some music in the background and that's fine yeah because it, it was very common also for girlfriends to say don't get into it gorov don't get into it yeah and yeah. gorov would say what do you say what do you say to my girlfriend what do you say you know yeah. like that, it was a place for and somewhere in the background is like in the summer of 69 but that's <laughs> that's just an incidental thing to the violence yeah do you yeah. miss those days kunal do you miss where music uh, uh, was quite violent in india you know i i i tell you why i don't miss it is because that <laughs> even if it existed today i don't think i'd participate it's not yeah. i don't think i'd be older yeah <laughs> yeah So I mean, even if that is the situation, uh, and if that those situations were to arise today, um, you know, like like I went recently for uh, the U two concert, mm -hmm. lovely concert, it was amazing concert. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was basically a a bunch of forty and fifty year olds that were enjoying music, you know, and it felt like 
like you two just came like 20 years a little too late in that sense because this time when we went like you know these are now all we- everyone there is earning well you know like everyone some people had come from pune and from calcutta had flown down for the concert so it was all very you know now these people have all mellowed out now you know and we're just enjoying something from our past uh, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the u2 concert we would have liked to go to you know when it's we were sad. it's very whatever. sad people in their 50s what they did at the u2 concert was basically show off about what tickets they could buy you know like yeah. these were the same yeah. people that you know got into you know proper fights in a metallica concert now they're yeah. like you're in oh b block no no see we are in the k block that's the balcony yeah. Yeah. that comes with snacks and an attendant so we are in yeah, that yeah. area so it yeah. became it about, became about that yeah 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 it's i i sort of feel sad that that kind of uh, you know the concert in india is no longer that you know and then of course there'd always be uh, especially at like rang sharda one of those venues there'd always be the police showing up you know then <laughs> the there'd be a break in the concert <laughs> and you'd know that okay now the police is going to come i mean everything is it's all organized but these had to come you know like the are the police has come we are going yeah. to <laughs> so that would also stop it for a little while band karo yes a band karo Hmm. You know, due to unruly, rowdy behavior, we have canceled the concert. Yeah. You know, and then no refund like, will be issued. <laughs> no <laughs> refunds are going to be issued. And then there'd yeah. be even more violence. Kunal. Yes. Uh, I have a conundrum mm-hmm. about multiplexes, movie theaters. Mm-hmm. Now, at any of the Indian multiplex chains. there is a a quick turn around right where they clean the mm. they clean the movie theater mm. now one of my favorite things that happens in the turn around is that these cleaners go in with these vacuum cleaners yeah and it's a kind of vacuum cleaner i haven't seen anywhere else in the world where the you know the the garbage collection normally a vacuum cleaner you know you're vacuuming and then all the thing gets sucked sucked up into a little I don't know how to design it, a little box or whatever which right. is sort of rolling around behind you. Yeah. You know the the res- the receptacle of the garbage. And it's sort of following around as you're cleaning the apartment. At an Inox or or a PVR that particular object where the garbage is being collected is on the cleaner's back. He's wearing mm. it like a backpack. Hmm hmm and i my conundrum is that i want to discuss with you how this person might feel as mm. he has he spends day in and day out being the receiver of garbage on his back you mm. know of of whatever you know popcorn or caramel you know whatever all these whatever these children have thrown mm. every hour he has to walk around the movie hall just just sucking this up and putting it in his own back mm. and I I just I just wanted to know if you have any thoughts about that individual and his job and and why you know, someone would invent a device of carry garbage on your own back Well I I mean I I don't have anything against the innovation I think it's quite a good use of um, you know it's ergonomically designed so getting in and out of those tight spaces and all I guess so but but for me when I was a kid I I mean there are two things that I remember when I was very young 6 7 years old I remember either wanting to be a deep sea diver or an astronaut. Yeah. You yeah. know and and in in both cases it it requires a sort of backpack, you know, either yes. you're wearing this huge uh, air tank on your on your back or you're wearing that huge rectangular sort of backpack if you're an astronaut uh, which has multiple functions. Uh and I Uh, and many other things you know heroic things kind of i i've always thought like you know when i saw the film uh, rocketeer or rocket man or whatever you know there's a he wears this backpack and he goes flying around everywhere and he could fly through this, this is pre iron man times he wears this big helmet and he's flying around everywhere and and that was also pretty cool so i i've always thought of backpacks as something like i've always thought of it as an aspirational thing you know mm. so even when mm. i go diving i i really enjoy putting on that back thing i feel like oh i'm kind of doing something you know like this is an adventure like you know if you're climbing mount everest you're going to wear a backpack you're going to be carrying your or you're going trekking or you're going climbing or you know you you feel like you're on an adventure you feel your uh, some sort of heroic thing 
Yeah, but heroism is associated with stuff on your back. But often the stuff you're carrying on your mm. back in that circumstance is like life saving. You know, oxygen, yeah. food. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you aware of that many professions where you have to carry other people's garbage on your back every hour? Not many. Not many. The the problem with this is that he's wearing a uniform and it's looking. It it looks very like you know it's a very cool looking thing. and then you're sucking up you know like some spaghetti has fallen somewhere and yes. some so there's a side kind of dichotomy in this which is quite and confusing my conundrum is i guess the conundrum here is how does the boss sell the job to a person like this now see i i i actually like the act of vacuuming you know like i'm quite fond of vacuuming i i like sucking up like i i don't think i'd be able to do it like a 9 to 5 job but I think the boss is going to have to make it sound a little sexy, you know. He's going to have to make it sound like he is a, a, a instead of a ghost buster, he's a dirt buster or whatever it uh, is. Uh, 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 uh. When there's something strange in the aisle over there, who are you going to call? Ramesh, tum PVR ka cleaner nahi ho, tum COVID yeah. hero ho. You know, it's the same yeah. thing. Right? I think it's yeah. really how you make shit jobs appealing. Normally, a podcast has commercials. Yes. So we would now like to cut to a commercial break. Yes. And we'll see you after the break. See you after the break. This is a break. This is the break. This is a break. Welcome <laughs> This, to the break. What was it earlier? Not a break. That was not a break. This is a break. During this break, we would like to advertise a product. What should we advertise? Hands. Hands. Yeah. Hands. Without it. You, it's a little tougher. It's difficult. Yeah. Get hands. Yeah. Live life to the fullest. Hold things. Touch things. Hands. Slap yourself. Kya batao? Yeah. So, uh, if you don't want to listen to shit ads like this, don't listen to these ads. Yeah. Uh, do something with your life. Yeah. Go to Patreon. dot com. Yeah. Where you will not have to listen to us talking nonsense. Yeah, and you don't have to listen to this garbage part of the podcast. This garbage part. The, you can listen to other garbage parts of the podcast. And you can and you can listen to it ad free. Ad free. Improved. No hot ads. Nothing. Yeah. It'll just like it'll just flow of samara hot chodo. Yeah. And sida udhar jao. Yeah. It'll, you'll be left alone. And the best thing is I won't be speaking Hindi yeah. with a colonial accent. So I mean anyone would pay for that. And there should be a cost and that cost is very minimal. Yes. For you to be on Patreon get special episodes, merchandise, live shows. Yep. And uh you know many other benefits. At some point you can see us in 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 a live show and come and touch our nose. No, no, don't, don't touch the nose. No, no, that's not. See again. Yeah. These are not things you'd have to listen to. You don't have to hear any of this. Any of this nonsense. So we are talking badly to tell you what to avoid. Yeah. So avoid this. Avoid this. Garbage. Go to Patreon. dot com forward, forward slash, slash our last week. So this is the break, and now it's over. Hey, bye bye. Kural. Yes. You had a finance conundrum. You know, I'm kind of coming to that age now where I'm trying to think. You know, I I need to plan for the future. I don't have like. much savings i have children who need to be educated i um and i'm trying to figure you know how 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 am i going to manage this so i've ended up watching a lot of and my youtube feed and the other social media feed has started sending me a lot of videos on finance management investment you know debt debt is money debt is great and all that stuff never buy a house and all that stuff. it's a waste you know i'm saying so and and then there's always a contrasting opinion of uh you know house there's nothing better than real estate so i'm saying i i'm getting very confused uh as to how am i going to manage these next 20 25 years uh, which is going to be a economic drain is going to be a financial drain on me i, I mean all the way till i'm dead uh but but these guys these guys are not helping you know because uh, because guys are saying all sorts of things and i i just don't know how i'm going to figure this out pal my feed is filled with people saying you know uh yeah don't have the losers in the world are people that and, and they always have an american accent you know they're always yeah. rich looking people who give this advice it's like all the losers in the world are people who buy things houses cars they, hmm. because what you are is you are cash poor the way to get yeah. rich is to borrow because you borrow and you spend never spend your own money borrow and spend 
and I'm like, what is it? Like, who's going to give me? A, like, I thought the whole point of economics was you make money, you spend money, and you die. Yeah. I thought that's yeah. what it all meant. Simple. Simple. Now I'm totally confused because they're like, you apparently spending money is bad. Keeping money is bad. Like, if you have bad. money in the bank, that's bad because there's money going down. Inflation or whatever. Buying a house is bad. And then some people say buying a house is the best. He's like, do you want to keep money in the bank? No, real, real rich people invest in property. And then some one other guy, exactly like you said, property is a sunk investment. People yeah. for 20 years, they're just waiting for the property. They can't find a buyer. It's, do you want that life? And I see your point, Kunal. It's like, how, who, how, what are we supposed to do? I, so I, my conclusion is that, uh, you know, something that you mentioned is that I mm-hmm. think we're going to have to go back to the way that it was in the, uh, you know, 17th, 18th century or even early 19th century where once the child is of age, you know, like 16, yeah. basically, uh, yeah. they're told to, you know, just now just figure it out, you know, just <laughs> see now, just see what you want to do because I'm done. You know, yeah, yeah. This the, the, this tap has run dry. Now you just see what you need to do because uh, so just figure it out and uh, don't come from tomorrow, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to see your face. So I so after after watching all these videos, you know, I think that's the only thought that comes to me. I think that's the only solution that I've been able to figure so far. Yeah, is, is to that, sit uh, your kids down and be like, listen, yeah. I've done my best. You are now sixteen. Do you have yeah. any skills? Can you <laughs> stitch a golf ball? Can you, yeah, can you at least make a sweater? Because I know yeah. some sweatshops in Bangladesh that are recruiting. Yeah. And you're educated enough. Your class 11 pass. That's much better yeah. than your great grandparents. Or me. So, or me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So make your own life. Yeah. We'll yeah. still love you and we'll see you every Sunday. You know, I think that hmm. sort of thing, it just makes yeah. things clear. You know, there's no yeah. issue here. I have been watching this show called Succession and and uh, it's it's a it's a fun show it's it's very it's it's good fun and uh, you know and they're talking of billions of dollars and and all the children involved are all you know insecure and uh, everyone's playing mind games and it's like very cutthroat within the family and and it's it's mil- billions and billions of dollars at stake here and it's the yeah the, the Rupert Murdoch empire you know it's supposed yeah, to be based pretty on pretty much yeah. Uh, but but the only thing that I keep thinking of is that, you know, this is seeming very mild compared to uh, any family fighting over 500 square feet uh, in Cyan, you know, or in, uh, or in Kulaba, uh, where, <laughs> so, so you're saying where that it gets a lot more competitive and, you know, they take it to another extreme, uh, you know, whether it's court cases, building walls, uh, you know, cutting ties, living in the same room and not talking to people for years on end. I mean, it gets very, very nasty, very, very mean. Uh, you know, not uh, like like living in 500 square feet and not communicating with each other. I'm saying that is a next le- because these people, you know, they have billions of dollars. They can go away. They still come back and meet, and it's still you know like okay, they want to keep it quite civil at some level, but they're not going. It's not. It's not half as competitive as fighting over very tiny piece of property uh, anywhere in our city or anywhere in our country, for that matter. So you're saying? Let me understand your theory. You're telling me that Indian succession is yeah. pet is is a lot more vicious for a lot less money. That's what you're saying. That that's. Be, I, I'm saying that whether it's a lot or little, it's definitely a lot more vicious and violent. And so is, the, so you're saying Indian succession is sort of like the father coming and tell, the son coming and telling the father, you know, that I don't want to badmouth my brother. I mean, I love him dearly. We're all one family, but uh, I think he's he's stolen your parking. Hmm. I don't want. I don't want that parking. I'm just telling you. Hmm. I'm telling hmm. you. Hmm. And then that that at some point leads to a family split over yeah. that parking. That parking is divided into three parts. Yeah. One family moves out. You know, so you're, basically what you're saying is that <laughs> what you get at the end of life is is shit. No, no. I'll tell you what the what the the difference is that in many many cases, I've seen families that 
live in very tight areas and people can actually move out of those spaces okay because there some of them are I, i've seen it happen in doctors families where mm. they live in one room with uh with their whole family and then there'll be another family in another room if they're just two brothers or a brother and sister but just for the sake of egos they're not going to leave that space you know yeah. they, they want to see who's going to crack first but that who's going to crack first lasts for 25 years kids grow up they start this thing they start moving then then it's it's all about you know you move you move you move you move and and it's 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 about like a very tiny space it's like it's like a nothing amount of area it's like mini succession right it's yeah it's succession for nothing i mean that it, it also happens with rich indian families i don't know if the if you know the story of if the singhania from raymonds of course uh, he has written a, so he got into it he gave the business to his son I mean, this is a proper family, wealthy family, etc. Uh, he gave the business to his son, uh, and I suppose was going to retire, but then the son disinherited him, or something happened. They had a dispute. He's written a whole book of how not to leave money to your children. Yeah, yeah. He's written a full book that has come out on how to run a business, and and he he says give it to anybody but not your children because they'll treat you like shit. Yeah. This is a published book where other Indian parents are reading this and getting this advice. I mean yeah. imagine lo- loads of Indians reading this and then they're meeting their children. This is going to have some impact on them and their inheritance plans. <laughs> you know they'll read this book and the next day they see their son they'll be like is my son going to do the same to me? Mm. Mm. Should I sit down and have that chat? Maybe I should build that wall through the dining room <laughs> so he stays on the other side. <laughs> Kunal. Yes. I have one last conundrum. Yes. About shoes. Hmm. Can you explain to me Kunal because uh, you know our producer Rajesh and you were trying to explain this to me. Uh, mm-hmm. There's something going on with shoes, sneakers in the world. And I only found out about this because of the Kanye West thing. Um and Kanye West is in trouble and apparently he has a relationship with Adidas or Adidas or however it's pronounced, the do doos. I don't know how it's mm. pronounced. A body dis. I don't know how to do this. And and he had co-created a brand of sneakers that whose price could be in the lakhs of rupees on the thousands of dollars. Can you mm-hmm. explain to me what's going on with sneakers? Because when I was growing up, you just bought a pair of sneakers. Now, apparently, there is an auction house of sneakers. There, there are. people who judge the value of sneakers by smelling them can you explain to me what's going on in the sneaker world first of all are they even called sneakers uh yeah they're called sneakers they call i mean whatever they call but the, i i think see in this day and age anything can become a collectible i guess you know um i i i i i i just think that there's this full because now people of course want to keep them in glass boxes and their prized possessions and they don't want to wear them and they you know they're more like investments it's like what happened with say comic books or um so someone will buy a pair of michael jordan sneakers and yeah. keep them in like like a closet like you've bought you know a painting or you you bought like a you know a souvenir from amsterdam or whatever you keep them behind a glass thing but you don't wear them yeah because some of those are like limited edition and some of those uh, are very rare or you know or there there are certain series that came out a certain year with some uh, like a specific logo or it's like a limited edition whatever i i i mean people have their the the thing is that like the whole infrastructure now that's now around them you have these these uh these foot uh, locker i don't know what it's called it's like a it's like a f- like a fair like a fest like a sale where they have mm. all these shoes and then you have these people who come and where you get your shoes verified like this is a genuine pair of air jordans or of whatever it is and the guy you know he opens the box and then he he checks for the the quality of the printing on the paper that's 
covering the shoes and then he looks at the shoe's tongue and then he smells the glue of the shoe to make sure <laughs> that it is the correct glue that he's getting then he makes sure that whether it's been worn or not worn how many times it's been worn and then he'll put a price on it or he'll uh, he'll say yeah this is genuine and then then that guy can go around se- selling it or you know so he's like it's. like someone who's evaluating a rembrandt or a michelangelo yeah. you know that kind yes. of yes it is it so, is very much that kind of skill and yeah, and, and we're talking still about shoes right the thing you're supposed to wear you that's supposed to get feet, wet yeah. and and it's supposed to be hit with muck and rubbish and it's still shoes that like this it's is shoes it's happening with shoes yeah so i so for me like you know like i i can get when it's great craftsmanship in something like you know like i can get oh this is these cars are collectible there's it's a great craftsmanship that went into these cars but i think with shoes it's like an industrialized sort of process right i mean it's not it's not some i mean of course every few years there's some new technology that goes into it but it's an industrial sort of thing like there is there isn't much like there's no artwork that's involved over here if you do this with shoes where does it stop you can do it with toothbrushes you can do it with uh, print printers i said my thing is why not yeah why not yeah. yeah yeah like it's just that you need enough of a consensus uh, you just need enough of a society of people who believe that this can become a collectible that this a can thing. be a thing yeah you yeah know? i think we should start one for old nokia phone chargers Yeah, and not the phone, just the charger. <laughs> just the charger. <laughs> and then Bata certainly taken off. Next thing we know, we'll be we'll be paying lakhs of rupees for some power shoes. Yeah, it'll be like uh, you know, like this is uh, or like a Hawaii chappal. Like I'm saying that we should now we should be, we should make it a very cool thing. You know, like Hawaii chappal. We should say that you know I have a 1989 Hawaii. And it's not yeah. this Hawaiiana and all that stuff. It's the original Bata Hawaii chappal from 1989 in mint condition. How much can you give me for that? I'm saying that should be the conversation now. We should be heading there. That will be like the old ambassador, you know? It'll it's yeah, priceless yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's worthless. You are looking for. <laughs> I don't think um, you meant priceless, is it? Because yeah, in Calcutta, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're still there. Then. Yeah. There's the a very the fine line is... between priceless and worthless, I think, when it comes to those <laughs> things. <laughs> Apparently, you guys were explaining to me that there is an a stock exchange type thing. It's a stock where, exchange. Where um. and this has fascinated me where you go in and they will uh, like let's say if you had bought the shoes 5 years ago its value may have gone up regardless yeah. of whether it fits anybody or not and right. you can resell them at a higher value so it's yeah it's not just shoes anymore it's like a stock or a bond it's a stock because what happens is that sometimes you can either take delivery of that shoe or you can not take delivery also oh like I've bought it. Now it's there. It's fine. Don't send it to me. You keep it. But I've bought it. So now I'm going to sell it when the price goes up in a couple of years or in three months or tomorrow or whatever. But basically, I'm treating it like a stock. And then if the price falls, then I look to sell it or whatever. I'm saying that now. I think you can even buy a percentage of a shoe. I don't think wow. you have to buy the whole shoe also. So if it's a very expensive shoe, I think you can buy it like a. like you know how you how you have like you can buy a percentage of a stock rather than a full stock i think you can now even buy a percentage of a shoe so when uh, you're dying if you make a list of your inheritance you know it's anubhapal yeah. property this much cash in the bank bonds yeah 25% of a nike <laughs> yeah it'll be 25% so, of a 95 air jordan say like, wow when did he pick that up man yeah yeah it was early days yeah so it'll be that kind of conversation we're not far from that in fact it we're all we're there we're there now so when i'm having a conversation with my son the inheritance conversation yeah i'll be like i'm sorry i've got nothing i've got 25% of an air jordan yeah so good luck with life you know you can sell that yeah. as long as the authenticator can sniff it and see you're genuine and then the rest right. of life is up to you and it might actually be enough for him that's the sad <laughs> part <laughs> that he may be able to go to graduate school with it yeah and and then in history it will it will actually state that his dad's estate uh consisted of 
you know, 50% of an Adidas 1999 edition, 25%. And then he started this company on the back of the stake that his dad had in these shoes. And not shoe companies, in that shoe. Yeah, that just one <laughs> very... 20% <laughs> of one shoe. You had a final point about this, which is, I think you had said that if shoes can have a future appreciation yeah, and we can trade them at a higher value, like a stock, what else can we do that with? Can we bet on a human being, for example? I mm, think you had that's raised what, that that's point. That's what you're, yeah, as in, like whether it can be a stake in a person, that's something yeah. you had raised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I find it interesting, you know, like whether the only thing is that you can't like that person has to firstly be up for sale. Um, <laughs> or he should at least be aware, like say it's his name is Sudhir. He works, say, in a PVR and has a vacuum cleaner on his back. And yeah. we bet that Sudhir one day is going to be richer than Adani. It's a bet you're taking or he's going to be more successful. Yeah, than... but that's a bet. Yeah, that's a bet. So, you know, I, I'm saying that like. For it to be an object or a thing, but you're saying that can it just be a speculation? Like you're in a market of speculation then. But rather than speculate in shoes, you're speculating on lives. In the future of a person. And you're like, I'm betting on this guy. Like for example, if I bet on you right now, yeah, yeah. I, I would bet against you. You know, like, like against, how you... Against would yeah. make sense, yeah. You know, like how you have uh, markets that hedge funds you know, bet on the collapse of the pound. Yeah, so right, I will right, be right. betting on the fact that nothing else will happen with you, you in life. You would be, as they say, going short on me. I'd be shorting you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there'd be profits in shorting you. But yeah, you, could, yeah. I could, someone could long you as well. You know, like that's someone it. I can think long me. Kunal but I think hasn't it would be wiser to yet. short. It would be much wiser <laughs> to short. I'm going short on Kunal. And that's that a line we were, I definitely want to hear. We would go somewhere and you'd be authenticated. You know, people would check yeah. out your health, your Just don't resume. sniff me. That's all. They'd sniff you. And they'd be like, we think he's got next 10 years, he's got a future, you know. Or, yeah. you know, this is it for him. You know, like yeah. short him. In your case, you'd be worthless or priceless. There'd be a market. In my case, I wouldn't be allowed on the stock exchange. No, I, said, yeah. I, 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 I think that uh, you would be more, um, you know, it would be more akin to taking a bet on a horse kind of thing in your case. It would be... <laughs> yeah, would be but a, a horse <laughs> that's not qualified to be in the derby. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like bringing a dog <laughs> into the derby and saying... Who's grazing in a meadow, basically. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we've got this donkey and he wants to yeah. run in this derby. It's like, I don't think this is a race for... It's a race for thoroughbreds. I don't think this donkey yeah. is allowed. It's a different animal. So yeah. it's not about longing and shorting. It's about the wrong market. Because you can't bet on a horse that's not running the race. That's the point <laughs> that you're trying to make. <laughs> it's not like, like the, the horse is in a meadow somewhere and you're saying uh, 35 bucks on Anubapal, the horse. But he's saying, but he's not here. He's saying that's okay. Yeah, and, he's, <laughs> and he's not even a horse. He's a donkey. He's not even a horse. Oh. He's a donkey. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm going short on him. Yeah, I just want to sniff him. Where is he? Can I sniff yeah. him? This has been our last week, Kural. It has, Pal. Uh, we request our listeners, please, wherever you are in the world, you know, uh, just we'd love to hear your voice because Kunal doesn't believe you're listening. So please send us your conundrums at, uh, you know, at on Patreon where we are for your listening pleasure. Uh, we are a subscription based entity like you know any good magazine or pornography or however whatever floats your boat and uh, uh, we will always be here discussing how to sniff shoes and how to disinherit your children any yes. last thoughts Kunal? Uh, no just uh, you know you all can send your conundrums to patreon patreon.com forward slash yes. our last week that's uh, where you can set your conundrums and do subscribe uh, for the free episode uh, the the bonus episode that everyone gets every month uh, every month sorry and um, and and definitely definitely short our stock in the future because we're not going we're, we're going nowhere bye bye you were listening to our last week. 
produced by Rajesh Tahil and Avdoot Khanolkar. Hosted by Anuvab Pal and Kunal Roy Kapoor. Assistant producers Akansha Kadam and Rahul Vaswani.